Farming's been around forever, but we're talking about a new way to farm. I'm joined by Tamara Mahar from Collective Joy Farm. So glad you came in today. Thank you, thanks for having me. Vertical farming, so tell me what that is. Yeah, so vertical farming is can be done outdoors in a greenhouse setting, or it can be done indoors uh, year round. That's how we're doing it here at Collective Joy Farm in Kingston. So vertical farming for us means growing fresh produce year round on stacked shelves under LED lighting. We use a very simple system that's cost effective and efficient to produce lots of food um, in a short grow cycle. So every seven to ten days uh, we have a new harvest which means by planting once a week we have a continuous harvest year round. So this would be like if you had 24 hour a day sunshine yeah, it, 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 it's the equivalent, really. Well, that's the great thing about it. Because it's indoor growing, we can control the environment. So we can produce food. We know what temperature is, it's going to be produced at. We can maintain that. We can maintain the humidity levels. We can maintain the growing conditions, the amount of water. We can ensure that like, we don't have pest problems. We have a lot of control over the growing environment, uh, the way that we're doing it. And that really eliminate, eliminates a lot of the risk. Uh, with farming. So I found it to be a very good way to produce a lot of food um, in a reliable way uh, year round. Year round. Year so, round. So, I mean, it's nothing better than going out to your garden and picking lettuce and things like that and eating it right away. I mean, that, that's just the best. So you yeah. could do that in the middle of February. Well, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. And I mean, of course, going out to your garden is an absolutely fabulous way to get something fresh. The closer you eat to home, the better it is for you. And I'm a huge advocate of all the wonderful community gardens that we have here in Kingston. Backyard gardening, everybody having their own garden. Uh, small farms, medium-sized farms, supporting your local farmers of all kinds. Um, it's really important that we eat closer to home, not only to support our local farmers, but also uh, to ensure that we're getting the maximum nutrition from our food. I don't know if everyone knows this, but the sooner we eat something from the time it's harvested, the more nutritious it is. If it's being shipped from across the world, it's losing nutrition all the way along the journey, in and out of appropriate temperatures, being stored, all the things. So if we're eating closer to home, we're eating more nutritious food. So I'm a huge advocate of any way that that can happen. That is a really good, I, I yeah. have not really thought about it that way. Yeah. But, and, and then the other is eating local year round. Yes. So. Uh, things like uh, apples and, and uh, potatoes, things like that, that can be stored mm -hmm. instead of looking for strawberries in February, which you know they've come from many miles away. Yeah. yeah, yeah, we can definitely do more seasonal eating and there's more opportunities all the time for more seasonal closer to home eating. Uh, for example, in Kingston, we have several really, really great farmers markets where people can uh, purchase food, including storage vegetables for the winter, like carrots and potatoes and squash and all kinds of things like that. They can be eating that all through the winter. They can be preserving the harvest throughout the growing season in canning or making jams or jellies. There's all kinds of ways to eat seasonal. And the one thing where we add uh, something to that environment is that we provide the fresh greens year round. So uh, we specialize in particular in microgreens, which are a very nutrient dense young shoot of a vegetable or herb. Essentially, we grow a range of about 10 to 15 different vegetables or herbs every single week year round. And in our first year of growing, we produced well over 4,000 pounds of fresh greens in a small growing area, less than 200 square feet in size. So it's amazing how much fresh food could be produced right where we are in small underused urban spaces. We converted a storefront essentially and we're doing it there. Um, and what that adds to the, the local food scene is fresh greens right through the winter in a cost effective manner. Uh, there are lots of ways to produce uh, greens, such as hydroponic growing in various systems. These tend to be a little bit more expensive and labor intensive and um, uh, input heavy. Uh, the method that we use is actually very, very simple. We're growing in, in flats with organic soil, no nutrients, no pesticides, no additional inputs of any kind, and all the compost goes back to our rural farm partner or to a local community garden. 
uh, where it all goes back into the, the system to be basically recycled into fresh, like regenerative uh, garden beds and growing fresh veggies in season. So it's like a cycle. The whole thing is, is just, exactly. it, it's a cycle. Yeah. So, so the greens that you grow, let's say in the dead of winter, and you say they're yeah. micro greens, it, yes. it would it be like you make a, a salad out of them or what do you do with yeah, them? Yeah, so, so our specialty, so we do do some herbs um, and of course in season we do especially edible flowers, we do some herbs, we do some vegetables, but our specialty at our year-round farm here in Kingston is the microgreens, of course, because they are the very, like I said, very young shoots of vegetables and herbs grown seven to ten days, so they taste like what they are. So essentially it's kind of like like lettuce, or some people have called it vegetable confetti. Um, they're, they're very nutrient rich. There's lots of studies now uh, highlighting all the nutritional benefits are actually being considered a functional food more and more and more for human health. And I think we're gonna see a lot more urban production of microgreens in the future because it makes sense to grow them very close to the eaters for the nutritional reasons I mentioned earlier. You can use them on as a salad green. We, we offer salad greens. You can use them on a sandwich, on a wrap, a burger, sprinkle them on soup. Uh, you could, uh, you can, I mean, we do edible flowers as well. People use those on cakes, charcuterie boards, like you name it. I mean, it's up to you to use the creativity. Um, I know we have several restaurants uh, that use them as well here in Kingston and they have incredible ways to use them such as like on tacos or cutting them fresh for their customers, putting them as a garnish on the dish. There's all kinds of ways that, that they can be used and they really add beauty, flavor and a nutritional value that uh, I think we're going to see a lot more of them in the future. Now nasturtiums are the only <laughs> edible flower I can think of, yeah. so, but you, you, you use plural there. So what yes. are some other edible flowers? So other edible flowers, so we do some seasonal variety that kind of come and go but the main ones that we do through the season which are our big producers are violas pansies which of course we have a lot of right now uh, I was just out at the farm this morning and we had quite a few uh, nasturtiums coming which are very very popular marigolds is the other one that we do really? calendula is another edible flower that's very popular oh. yeah but daisies are edible a lot of flowers are edible and I would definitely if you're into edible flowers buy your your plants or grow them yourself so that you know that they haven't used artificial fertilizer on them would be my recommendation but they are beautiful and very popular now ever since covid they've become very 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 popular at least here in the kingston area where of course we do our farm operation yeah, okay they're so, beautiful. So, so you've sold me on lake yeah. gardening yeah so I'm on my way home. I need to buy all the equipment I'm going to be using. I'll wait till the winter when mm. I you know, can't grow in my garden. Mm. What do I need to buy? Yes, okay, so if you want to get started growing microgreens at home, great. Um, you can come in, of course, and talk to me anytime. I actually have information up in my shop available. You can take a picture with your phone. You can have full instructions. I love to talk to people about this because I think growing more of our own food it just makes so much sense. It's so empowering. It makes people happy. Um, and all you really need to get started, especially with microgreens, is something to grow in. Uh, we use a greenhouse flat, so like a 10 by 20 standard kind of greenhouse flat. You could use a recycled container from salad or something that you've purchased. You could use whatever you have at home that's convenient. You need some organic soil mix. You need some organic seeds. I recommend mom's a sprouting seeds, that's where we get most of our seeds and have for many, many years. A great Canadian supplier of very reliable seeds for microgreens. And then you need some water. And if you're growing them in the wintertime, as you mentioned, you'll need an LED light or some kind of growing light to give it a little bit of supplementary lighting. But that's really all you need to get started. And you could easily get started with that little setup for you know, just like under $50 or something and be producing your own food within one week. Like it's just not gonna take you months and months to produce your, your fresh greens. It's, it's seven to 10 days for most of them. Well, I was just doing the math and it seemed to me lettuce yeah. went up to something like seven or $8 wow. over the winter. It did? It, it was, it went oh my God. like, it was like, <laughs> ouch, I think I switched to spinach or something and said to heck with this. But yeah, come see us. I, I should have come <laughs> to see you, absolutely, because I'm just doing the math and thinking, you know, that 50 bucks, it would pay for itself. Oh, yeah, and yeah. growing your own. I mean, there's just something about having something fresh growing, especially in the winter oh, months. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I've been doing this for over 10 years now, and I absolutely love having fresh food growing, especially when the snow is flying around outside and you've got all this beautiful fresh produce available oh, that you, you've grown yourself. It's empowering, and it feels great. And, and just to get your hands in, in soil, 
soil exactly in, in the dead of winter exactly. it's just like oh, exactly yeah, that'd be so great exactly yeah. and so in the fall we're, we're very very busy with our peak season right now but in the fall we do offer some uh, workshops and microgreen growing instructions as part of as part of open farms kingston we will be offering an open house and I did it last year for Open Farms as well. And basically, I just stand out front teaching people all day how to grow their own microgreens at home. Oh my and goodness. just doing little demos and giving people a little thing to take home. Because I really, really do believe in the power of people learning to produce right. their own food and growing more for themselves. And of course, supporting all the local people that are doing it as well. Well, you convince me now. <laughs> how, how do I find you? Yeah, so you can find us. So we are a year-round indoor farm here in Kingston. We're open to the public from Tuesday to Saturday from 10 to 5 at 477 McDonnell Street. And you can also find us at the Memorial Center Farmers Market every Sunday year-round. And you can find us at the Frontenac Farmers Mar Market out in Harrowsmith on Friday nights. Uh, we offer a large range of microgreens, uh, of course, to direct customers, but also to restaurants and hospitality providers everywhere in Kingston. We do free, free delivery. Um, and we also have a line of plant-based whole food products made with our own and other local ingredients so that they're very nourishing and delicious and complements the greens that we offer. So we have a lot to offer. I'd love if you come come check us out. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, the information's on the screen. Thank you so much for coming in to tell me about it. You're welcome. Thanks for having me.